Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. What's that outside your window? Scratching. Prying to get in. I don't know. But maybe we'll just close the blinds and not find out. Today, these viewers sent in their allegedly true stories with what they believe are skimwalkers or wendigos. As always, it is up to you whether or not you believe them or not. I'm not here trying to convince anybody of anything. If you have a story that you would like to share, whether it be a skimwalker or a wendigo story or something else, be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours to help keep this channel going. Now, without any further hesitation, let's get into these creepy skimwalker and wendigo stories that'll keep you out of the woods tonight. About 11 months ago, I traveled all around Utah, and I've been really into the story since then, but won't speak of them out loud. My fiancé will speak of them out loud. He came inside tonight and tells me that he thinks he's seen a you-know-what, and that we need to stop listening to those stories at night. We heard the dogs bolt down the stairs, so he hops up to go outside. We have a Rhodesian Ridgeback that hops the fence at his leisure and a blue healer who alerts us to everything on the property very vocally. Our two dogs run into, not two, but right into the fence and don't bark. This is incredibly unusual. The gate of the black figure was large and loud. It crossed an acre and a half at about a half a second or so. It honestly sounded wobbly, but like a human or a bipedal gait. It went diagonal across the wood-filled yard next to me, which you can see through the woods, which aren't thick at all. In another half a second, it was walking like a regular person and had made it up to the length of the street and took a left at the four-way. Once it turned there, it had a normal speed. My fiancé came back inside with chills telling me this. It was just... dark. Not taking any odd shapes, but even in a well-lit spot, it's like the figure sucked in the light around it. It didn't move like a human, and I've never seen my dogs or fiancé act this way. None of them ever show fear. What could it have been? I don't want to say the name out loud after hearing stories because I heard that it invokes them, but I think it's one of those uh, Navajo witches everyone talks about. This story will be short as I was young at the time. I'm a 19 year old girl who grew up in Missouri. Less than 5 minutes by car from the house I grew up is a large nature reserve. It was hundreds of acres of woods and closed every night before sundown. These untouched woods overflowed to a couple of back roads connecting to our town to the next. I was around 3 or 4 at the time and was a very curious little girl often getting myself into trouble when my parents looked away. It's safe to say I was rarely scared. My parents and I would travel those roads consistently when I was young as my pediatrician was in the next town. Sometimes we'd drive on them close to dusk and my mom told me on those occasions I'd grab her attention and say, we have to get back before dark. She said it was spoken with urgency, the amount of urgency that only a toddler can muster. Honestly, she thought it was cute after the first time. My little imagination running wild. Recently, I was told I was adopted and that my heritage is largely Native American. I've met my biological family, and they're very sensitive to things that are unnatural. I won't lie and say this is the only strange story from my childhood, but this is the only one I can remember. I don't know what lived in those woods or if they watched our car every time we traveled down those roads but I know for a fact that I'd never felt comfortable driving them alone. After talking to some of my relatives, I found out that they are Navajo, and they think what could have been watching me was a skimwalker. I need some help from the community. Last night, which was February 11th, 2020, 
I had gotten back to my bedroom from using the bathroom at I'd say around maybe 10 or 10.30. I was getting ready for bed when I heard some sort of shuffling or trotting outside my window. Normally it's a deer or a coyote. I live in rural upstate New York, so I like to take a look and see what is what's causing all this noise, you know? Maybe it's a nice buck, as I do like to hunt, so it would be nice to scout some game. When I looked outside, however, I saw this shadowy thing. It looked no smaller than six foot, but I couldn't make out any features. All the lights were off in my house, so it couldn't have been a reflection or a shadow from something inside, that's for sure. I looked at it for at least 10 seconds, maybe even more, because I couldn't figure out what I was looking at. But then I heard this awful scream that sounded like a cross between a deer, coyote, fox, and almost a human scream that lasted about 3 seconds or so. I was obviously scared out of my mind, so I didn't go out and look, but about 15 minutes later I looked out my window again, and there was nothing. I was on the edge of my seat for the rest of the night and just felt extremely paranoid like something was watching me. The rest of the night I kept hearing scraping on my roof. If I listened hard enough, I could hear slight footsteps outside. I would greatly appreciate some help if you have any ideas to what or who could have done this or if maybe there's a logical explanation to this. I'm hoping this isn't some sort of unknown creature or something because that's going to be hard to explain. I think I've had an experience and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Me and my best friend were walking towards a park to go and hang out, and then we discovered the sewer system. We decided to check it out because we were stupid. There was a grate covering it, but the bars were bent enough that me and her could squeeze in. She had a really bad feeling about it. She's a super intuitive person when it comes to paranormal stuff, but I just ignored it and went further in. There was a big room area that the grate led into, and it had a grate on top of there where the light was shining through. There was a big tunnel leading right, and a small tunnel up high that I couldn't reach up to the left. It was super dark, so I couldn't see very well. But a long way down there was another grate, and there was some light leaking in. I could see a long lanky thing stretched out that looked like a really skinny arm. I couldn't see a body because it was further down. It was darker down there, and I could only see it because it was right in front of the light. So it was shining behind it and made it pop out. Sorry if this was word of weird, I don't know how to really describe it. It looked like an arm stretched out, and it wasn't moving. I ignored it, thinking it was probably just a plank of wood or something propped up because there were some planks of wood in the room that I was in. I decided to stack some rocks by the left tunnel so that I could reach it and look in. As I looked through the tunnel, there was another room far down the tunnel, and it had a grate on top of it like my room, and the light was leaking in. Then I noticed this gray, hunched over figure with an extremely bony body. It didn't have any clothes on or hair from what I could see. The body looked super malnourished. I couldn't see its head or its legs since the tunnel was really small. All I could really see was its back, part of its neck, and the tops of its arms. It also wasn't moving, and by this point, I was freaking out. I went back to my friend and told her what I had seen. I asked her for her phone so I could take a picture to show her since she refused to go into there. I took the picture, and then we hightailed it out of there. I sadly don't have the picture because the phone it was taken on had gotten lost since then. We have gone back a couple of times but never saw anything like it since. The tunnels were just empty. I think the figures were either crawlers or maybe some sort of alien. My other friend thinks it may be a skimwalker or a wendigo. If anyone has any information on this, please let me know. I can't find too much information about them. Sorry if this was poorly worded. I am not the best at writing.
This is something my sister experienced about a week ago, which was similar to an experience a friend of hers had a month before. She was sleeping at her boyfriend's house, which backs onto a mountain with a forest starting in his backyard. When she decided to go get herself some food from upstairs, her boyfriend refused to go with her as he had school in the morning, and it was already 1 in the morning, so he just wanted to sleep. His room is in the basement, so she went up the stairs to the kitchen, on the same level as the rest of his family's bedrooms. Because she didn't want to wake everyone else up, she just used her phone flashlight while she prepared herself some bananas and hummus. While doing so, she heard what sounded like a large dog. They don't have any pets in this house, so it was kind of odd to her. It sounded like this dog was heading toward the bathroom, which she recognized as it was squeaky. The door opened and closed about three or four times before finally closing. Then the footsteps progressed down the hall in her direction to a closet door where the same thing happened. Only this time the door was left open. She tried to brush it off as a family member and went back to chopping her banana. Out of the corner of her eye she saw what appeared to be a very large black figure slowly lean its way around the hallway corner and into the kitchen. She looked up and it was gone. The same thing happened again, only this time its neck stretched out longer than it should have to get a better look at her. She looked up again and caught a glimpse of something with white glowing eyes before it disappeared back into the corner. At this point she was freaked out and grabbed her knife. She quickly went around the corner to turn the light before gathering all of her stuff and heading back downstairs. When she told her boyfriend in the morning, he told her that the closet door is not just a closet door, it's an empty room with the attic door in the ceiling. They went in the room the next day and found that paint had been scratched off the attic door and the floor was scratched beneath it. A friend of hers had a similar incident about a month or so before that while he was taking a leak in the backyard. He looked up to see a tall creature with what he described to be white glowing eyes and huge teeth standing amongst the trees. Once it noticed him, it ran off, but then started coming after him once he started running back towards the house. Not entirely sure what this is, but whatever it is, I really hope I never meet it. This story happened to me about 12 years ago. I was around 24 at the time. I worked hospitality, so it'd be later at night when my friends and I hung out. So at around 9 o'clock, my friend and I decided to go for a drive, someplace we've never been, just to get in the car and go, you know? I offered and wanted to drive because my mother was out of town and I was using her Mercedes. It was one of those early 90s e-bodies. The ones that were big piles of heavy steel. A real tank of a car. I only mention the car body because it becomes relevant later in the story. He happily agreed and we hit the road. We lived near Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the time. Good old Wisconsin, where you can get a lot of really good stories out of, but nothing really seemingly fun happens here. It seems to be a pretty paranormal state as well. There are a lot of ghost stories that come from here. Either way, we drive north out of the city and drive for about an hour when I see an exit I don't recognize and decide to get off there. There was nothing at this exit other than cornfields. No gas station or restaurant signs, no visible light of a town in any direction. So we were in a place we didn't recognize. But that was the point. Just driving to get nowhere because the speed limit was 35 and we were in no rush. The moon was out enough that everything was pretty visible. About a mile into the cornfields, we see two kids on the right side of the road. We comment on how weird it is because there is no sign of housing or stores or even lights on the horizon. Plus, it was like 10.30 at night. Naturally, we were two larger guys, so we didn't really worry about anything. So I slowed down so we could inquire if their car broke down and if they were okay. As we pulled up, I noticed the kid in front's clothing. It was a stained a cream color tweed type shirt 
with real tattered sleeves and overalls with only one strap. He appeared to be maybe 12 years old. The second kid was taller wearing a red flannel type shirt with old times looking khaki pants. However, I could barely notice the taller kid standing further behind the smaller one because as I pulled up, noticing the clothes, I got to see the whole child fully, and his arms were slightly raised, almost in that iconic zombie way. But his eyes, I couldn't take my eyes off of his, and I did my best to mutter to my friend, you're seeing this too, right? His eyes were pitch black, blacker than the night be easy to see as he stood there staring at us. I don't know what the heck I was seeing, but I have never been so frightened in my life, and I have never had such an odd experience that have left me unable to deny anything. So we're stopped for a moment locking eyes with whatever this thing was. It was no child, it was evil. I have zero doubts about that. We quickly agree to go, and fast. We are not going to inquire with them. This was straight out of the Twilight Zone. And I remember the hitchhiker, and that was not happening tonight, no sir. So we go, and we clamber between ourselves. What the heck did we just see? What the heck was that all about? Still no signs of homes, just open cornfields. How these two kids could be there, I, I don't know. But I believe those were not kids. So I keep driving, and we get out of the fields into a wooded windy road shortly after, probably around five minutes. Here in Wisconsin, there are random historical markers displaying in whatever year this happened information. I only mention that because I passed one on the curve, so I glanced at that. As I'm driving through a curve going about 45 miles per hour, a creature that I can barely describe walks in front of my car. As I saw it, it was nothing like I have ever seen. Its spine was tall. It stuck above the hood ornament as I hit it. It was a gray color. It looked like nothing I have ever seen. It had a very tall arc in its spine, almost like when a cat hisses and goes on its toes. That kind of shape, but in a very tall, gangly creature. I hit this thing straight on with a tank of a Benz. My friend is freaked out at this point, as am I, to say the least. I stop immediately. But now, we're both in a bit of a scared state from the children of the corn. And now this thing literally within minutes of one another. We decided that getting out of the car is not going to happen. But I decided to stay in the locked car but use the car and its lighting to see what we hit to make sure whatever the hell it was was dead. And I needed to know what I just saw. I drive in tiny circles backing up and forwards to straighten out the bends. Making contact with its spine, body, and head anywhere. That was unnerving. And although I wanted to check my mother's car... That would be dealt with further down the road. We were not going to get out there. So we decided to head home at this point. Fifteen minutes later before I got back to the freeway, I needed to get out and see how bad the car was. As I got out the check, as quickly as I could, not taking any chances tonight, I noticed my grill was busted in but nothing too bad. So I made sure it was secure and got back in as quickly as possible. My friend decided to stay inside the car. I respect that. Recently, I heard of the Black Eyed Kids and freaked out a little bit. I did not know that they were a real thing. I thought I just saw a couple of demon kids or damned ghosts or something. I didn't know what to think. To this day, I've looked through tons of photos of supposed cryptid beasts and mythological creatures looking for what I hit. And the closest thing I've found is some Algonquin drawings of Wendigos. And they were very close to what I believe I saw and hit that night. It seems to me... Very odd both things could happen so close to one another and not be related, you know? Possibly it was an evil area, or possibly a ley line, I don't know. I would like to point out I've lived in Wisconsin for a long time, and that it was not a deer or a coyote or anything else. What I hit was nothing native or known to Wisconsin's landscape, and neither were those horrid kids. I will never forget any of those faces, and I just hope I never come across them again.
These encounters take place in the southeast of Pennsylvania nearby the town of Satio and Three Springs, little unknown towns up in the mountains. The first encounter came in the year of 2007 when I was 15 years old. It took place in the summertime where I was with my two little brothers who were five and seven at the time. We were having a small camp sleepover at our family friend's trailer with their three children, Harley, Casey, and Scott, who were teenagers. The weekend was fun as we country brats had fun riding on three-wheelers, swimming, watching movies inside of the trailer, and camping outside. Boys had their own tent and vice versa with the girls. On the last night of our camping weekend, we were all heading to bed. The night was cold even in the summer because of the mountain air but inside of the tents we were all warm with body heat and sleeping bags. As everyone was heading to bed, the moment my head hit the pillow, all of us heard what sounded like a woman screaming. All of us older kids rose up from our bags and opened our tents to look at each other and asking if they had heard that. I asked if it could have been a mountain lion since we get them here in Pennsylvania. Or maybe it was an owl. All of us were confused as we decided to continue to listen to whatever it was that was screaming. I decided that we should probably check where the direction of the screaming came from and run to the trailer to keep ourselves safe, albeit Scott, the older one of our group of the three girls, said we shouldn't until he changed his mind after hearing the fourth feminine scream. Leaving our tents, we looked towards the source of the sound. It was coming from a wheat field about 20 feet away from us. To give an idea of how big this wheat field was, it was about a half a mile long. The only source of light we had was the moon above us as we stared into a, a terrifying, dark field. Suddenly, we noticed a tall, black figure smack in the middle of the field. The figure looked like a tall stick figure from afar, but regardless of what it was, we had to leave. Waking up my little brothers, Scott scooped up one of them while I took the youngest into my arms as Harley and Casey took off in full sprint to open the door of the trailer. Once we got inside, we were all terrified and tried to calm down by watching some TV on the couch, trying to ignore the continuous screaming outside. I even remember the movie that was playing, which was Hollow Man. When the morning came, we all hardly slept as Harley, Casey, and Scott's parents came home along with our parents in typical fashion. When we tried to tell them what happened, they didn't really believe us. Back then, I didn't know what it was that terrifying night, but I believe it was a Wendigo. Years later, as of 2019, Labor Day, I believe this time I heard the same thing again. On Saturday night, I was walking my dog, Barker, in my old hometown since the poor thing had to use the bathroom. I knew my old hometown of Satio, like the back of my hand. Walking him down by the village's post office, I heard the old World War II air siren that used to be used as a fire alarm to alert the towns around the area that there was a fire. Satio was the only town that had this siren as well as the fire department, but it came from the direction up the road that led to Three Springs another town that was three miles from Satio. The usual sound of silence of animals besides the crickets hung in the air as well as the sound of the faraway siren sound that only lasted a few short seconds. It made my skin crawl. My gut told me to get away from the area and head back to my home quickly, which my dog and I did. People in Pennsylvania, especially in the southeastern parts, please be wary of what happens to be in our forest. First off, my name is Trent. I was 17 at the time and walking home from a friend's house. It was late, maybe around 11 or 12 at night. I live in Nikiski, Alaska, and anyone who's been here during the summer knows it doesn't get too dark, just less light if that makes any sense. Anyways, I was just starting my walk on the North Road Highway to How Bowdy, about a mile and a half. I've done it an uncountable amount of times. Before and since, nothing has happened. But this one time, as I was walking down the road out of nowhere, I hear a dog whining and whimpering like it was in pain. 
This obviously concerned me, and so I started to try to place the sound. It seemed to be coming from the woods on the other side of the road next to me. So I crossed the road trying to spot where the distressed dog could be. But there were no houses and no dog, just the forest. I tried homing in on where the sound was coming from as I continued walking down the road. But oddly, it didn't seem to come from any one place. The best I could describe is it was literally coming from the woods. I kept walking down the road just trying to spot something and it suddenly kicked up whining and yelping as it was something was like trying to beat it to death or something. I kept trying to look more frantically as I walked, almost debating if I should go into the woods to search. But then, what I noticed that it was almost sounding like the sound was repetitive. Like the same whines over and over. It was strange enough to keep me on the road. As I continued walking, hoping to see the dog, the whining and yelping started sounding like it was static, like it was a radio with interference. Suddenly, hints of suspicion turned to knowing something sinister was happening. I noped the heck out of that situation and walked back to the other side of the road, continuing to walk faster back home, wondering what the hell was going on. Anyone who knows me knows I love the hell out of dogs. Maybe someone was trying to lure me into the woods. Whatever the case, the sound was just growing worse, more pain, more static, more yelping and barking in a loop. And as I was hastily walking and watching the woods, I had the sudden realization, it was following me. I had chills and goosebumps like crazy knowing this. I just started walking even faster. After about a half a mile, it was still there, nowhere to be seen but clearly heard. It sounded louder and almost like it was angry. When I finally got to How Bowdy and turned down the road, it finally started to fade, and I finally felt relief. I know this isn't the scariest thing that's on your channel, but it gives me chills every time I remember it. I've done some research and a friend says it sounds like a skimwalker. I'm really not sure, but I am one-fourth Native American if that matters. I'd really appreciate hearing it on your channel, if you would please read it. First of all, I'd like to say that my username isn't because I'm a Sasquatch hunter or anything, it's just a college football reference. Anyway, this might be a little long, but I'm a male and 28 years old, and I've never believed in anything like demons or cryptids. Aliens probably do come here, right? I don't know. I don't even believe in a personal god, to be honest. I've always been a logical person, but the other day I experienced something that has truly shaken me to my core. I recently moved to Northwest Florida and have a large amount of woodland on my property. Since I've been here, I've been hiking a lot. I hike alone and don't ever feel uncomfortable by doing so, because I feel even out here that I am the apex predator. I always go with a weapon to make sure that I'm safe. So about a week ago, I'm out here just enjoying the hike when the forest became completely silent. I really didn't make too much notice, but enough to make me note that I should be aware that coyotes or bobcat could be in the area. Not more than a minute later I heard movement. I scan the surroundings when I see it. It's a deer. A buck, to be specific. Quite large, too. It looked to be about an eight point, though. I'm not sure because the moment I saw this deer, a sense of dread washed all over me. I've lived a life that has made me hypervigilant, and also comfortable that no matter what bad situation may come my way, I'll be able to react in a way that will end with me coming out on the other end. But this just felt different. The buck turned its head and looked right at me. Now I've never been seen by a deer, and not have them bolt in the opposite direction, but this one didn't. It looked right at me for at least 10 seconds, because this felt different. I unholstered my pistol, just in case this guy decided to charge, but it didn't. It didn't move an inch, and while he's checking me out, I'm checking him out, and I notice this deer looks sick, bad sick. It was totally emaciated. Then the smell hit me, a bad, dead decomposing smell. 
At this point, the deer breaks its gaze and begins to walk away. Except it didn't walk, it stomped. One step at a time, this thing stomped so hard its knees would buckle almost to the point that it appeared to be going to fall every time. Almost like a baby deer, new on its feet. But with a lot more force, and again one step at a time. Not how four-legged animals normally walk, if you know what I mean. Another really strange thing about this was as soon as it walked behind a tree, it didn't reappear on the other side, nor did I hear more than a few steps. As soon as it was out of sight, there was no sound coming from its steps, and I just don't see how I couldn't hear it anymore, considering it was no more than 30 or 35 yards away. Also, after it was out of sight, the normal sounds of the forest returned, and my feeling of dread was gone. I'm not saying this was something other than a sick deer, but I just can't shake the feeling that this was something else. I've been uncertain about my position on the paranormal in general, because I just can't get it out of my head. I once dated a girl who claimed her house was haunted by the ghost of a little girl. Her parents even had ghost hunters come out and supposedly had some evidence, but while staying the night there I saw a door close while in bed and no way of explaining it. Anyway, that's it. I'm just wondering if this was a Wendigo or a Skimwalker and what it was doing in Northwest Florida. Hi Swamp, I came across your channel a couple of days ago and have been listening to the stories and have discovered similar experiences to mine, so I decided to send in mine to see what you guys think it is. I personally believe it to be a skimwalker or a wendigo. Well, here it is. So my name is Isla, and I'm 14 years old. I live in the state of Michigan, in the US, with my aunt, uncle, and two of my cousins and my dog Otis. I moved in with them after my parents died in a car accident in London, where I'm originally from. Three years ago, I haven't really been the same ever since, you know? I now prefer solitude and long walks in the nearby forest with Otis tagging along, and I've been doing it for years. Each night after dinner, I'd grab a jacket, flashlight, and a pocket knife and head out. The forest here is beautiful. All the pine trees and the view of the immense lake always bring me a sense of peace. However, on one particular night three weeks ago, peace was the opposite of what I felt. I had been hiking for about two miles with Otis by my side when I began to get an uneasy feeling. I couldn't explain it, something just felt off. I pushed the feeling aside and continued up my usual track. Fifteen minutes later I arrived in the small clearing, overlooking the lake in the town where I lived. I could see everything up here, sitting on a mound of earth. I was having a match of tug of war with my dog over his stick. When he just stopped, he dropped the stick from his mouth and froze. His tail was between his legs and his ears were pinned back in the alert. Now, Otis is part chicken, I'm telling you. So to see him go in defense mode kind of freaked me out. All of a sudden there was this awful stench, it almost smelt like that one time my aunt had put a large piece of beef in the cooler and forgot about it for a couple of weeks. Decaying meat is the best way I can explain the smell. Dread washed over me as I rose from the mound. It was almost completely dark outside and my torch only showed as far as ten or so meters, so I couldn't see a lot. Otis then began growling and backing up a little. I did the same. I was unsure what was triggering Otis, but things like wolf, coyote, or bear went through my head, but I've only ever seen rabbits, foxes, and sometimes the occasional deer or buck. Nothing I couldn't scare off. So with that in mind, I took a step forward and yelled things like, clear off, or scram. But Otis didn't change his behavior. I got fed up yelling and decided that whatever it was had scampered and Otis would just have to pull himself together because we were going now, and that meant going in the direction where the animal was. To be honest, I was freaking out. I kept telling Otis that there was nothing there, and to grow up, it, it was dumb. 
I said these things rather to reassure myself more than my dog, to be honest. I tried walking forward, but Otis didn't budge. After five minutes of trying this, I gave up and decided to carry on by carrying him, as he wasn't that heavy anyway. I walked over to him and lifted him into my arms. Despite the slight wriggle of protest, he settled slightly in my hold. With that, I walked out to the clearing and made my journey back through the forest to my house. I had only walked a couple of feet when I heard someone yell, SCRAM! I froze. It was now around 9.30pm and no one else was around, but that's not what made my blood run cold. Whoever yelled it, yelled it the exact same way I did. Literally, exactly the same. The tone, the pitch, everything, it was my voice shouting back at me. Only, it wasn't at the same time. It sounded a lot like me, but it was just wrong. It held no emotion, it never echoed, it sounded empty and static. I stood there in the middle of the forest surrounded by trees and didn't dare move. I should have been running like hell right then, but I couldn't. My feet were glued in position. About 15 feet behind me I heard a branch snap. I could tell that it was a large branch too. So whatever it was, it was big. Really big. I heard the voice sound out again, but this time in a different voice with a different word. Isla. It was my mother? My mother was here? How the heck did it know what my mother sounded like? And how the heck did it know my name? She's been dead for three years. Three years. I felt burning tears steam uncontrollably down my face as I managed to turn slowly around to face whatever the heck it was. Now... I wish I hadn't. Now I lay in bed every night and think, why the heck did you turn around? Why couldn't you have just run? What I saw has left me scarred for life. It was tall, like nearly eight feet tall, and it was hunched over. There were patches of brown fur, but most of it was just rotting gray skin. It had arms longer than its legs with two clawed hands at the end of each. The legs were that of a dog, only elongated with paws as a feet. The head scared me the most, though. It had the head of a buck with no lips or eyeballs, just empty sockets. Bone poked out of its places, and the antlers were misshapen and broken. And the mouth weren't just teeth, but fangs like that of a wolf's. That was me. Otis leapt out of my arms and legged it down the hill with me, not far behind it. I didn't care if it chased me. I just wanted out of there, and away from that creature. I had never run so fast in my life, perhaps it was the adrenaline and the fact that I was running downhill, but I was like Usain Bolt that night. I could hear thundering feet behind me, but that only pushed me to go faster. I reached the forest edge, but it didn't stop there. I didn't stop until I was in my kitchen, locking all the doors and windows in the house. My aunt and uncle looked at me as if I were on crack or something. My cousin rushed downstairs looking panic-stricken. What the heck is up with you? My oldest cousin asked. I simply shook my head and slowly walked upstairs, Otis trailing behind me. I locked the window of my room as well as the door. My aunt came to check up on me about an hour later, asking if I was alright. But I simply passed it off as seeing a couple of wolves and said that everything was all good. That night I didn't sleep but rather sat down at thy window with my pocket knife in hand and Otis curled at my feet. I was waiting for it. This won't be the last time we see each other, I know it. As much as I hope and pray we never do cross paths again, there's still some nights where I swear I can hear a faint voice calling my name. Thanks for listening to these creepy, allegedly true Skimwalker and Wendigo stories sent in by viewers just like you. If you enjoyed these stories, please help me out and hit that like button. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us, hit that subscribe button, and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, whether it's a skimwalker or a wendigo story or something else, 
Be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. And stories like yours that help keep this show going. If you're not aware, you can download your favorite Swamp Dweller Scary Stories on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about every other major podcasting platform out there. Thank you guys as always for supporting the Swamp the way you do. It really is appreciated. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I would love you guys to answer this question for me. What do you find scarier? The possibility of running into a Wendigo or a Skimwalker? I'd love to know your answers down below. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.